Well, this is going to be the new form of transportation after the Middle East erupts, erupts in war. And I don't know if that's going to happen right away. It's been talked about for so many years. But it looks like one event I reported on before. And, um, you know, somebody told me that the uh, source I got it from is not always reliable. Well, it turned out the event was correct. That, that underground explosion that happened in the Iranian nuclear facility did occur. 240 workers either trapped or killed underground. Some people suspect sabotage. So, you know, I'm showing an oil tanker back here. Uh, if we get to cut the uh, supply of oil cut off in the Middle East, there's probably going to be some kind of rationing. Now, I know that's jumping a gun on this type of stuff, but the writing's on the wall. The writing's on the wall. And I'm surprised oil didn't take a move upward upon that news. But just remember... You know, the alternative form of transportation is going back to old tech, which you can combine with new tech. As you can see, this bicycle has a lot of new tech on it, a lot of aero stuff, and uh, that could be your um, weapon to uh, fight what could possibly come down the road with some kind of oil rationing or gasoline rationing. Now, I want to point out the story real quickly. I'm not going to actually, um, you know, I'm going to show you, I'll give you the link on this, but I reported it from W. Uh, ND.com I think it was and they said it's not always uh, perfect sometimes they jump the gun on things but this is from the Business Insider I'll post a link but just give you the headline massive explosion reported at Iran's Fort Dow nuclear facility now this is related to the metals because it says if things heat up in the Middle East the metals are going to go up don't, don't worry about what it's doing today you know you're not a, unless you're a day trader but Jerusalem Post uh, independently uh, confirmed it. It was independently confirmed, as you see I'm pointing to here. Also, uh, the uh, Times of London also confirmed it. So, this event did occur, and I think that's important for oil and the metals. Now, you're looking today, the metals are down, right? Except for palladium. Palladium still moving upward. You know, I can never tell you why palladium moves up and down. I mean, I know it's an industrial metal. If the stocks are doing good, it can go up. Industry's doing good. Actually, the damn price of palladium, even though it's moved up quite a bit, it's still damn too too damn low. I know it can go down lower; it could possibly go down to 650 or something like that. But then again, maybe not. Maybe not. It's speculation to to bet that it's going to go down. It's speculation to bet that it's going up. But it's going to do one or the other. Palladium is a more volatile metal than probably silver, so. You know, if you get it, just keep in mind it's not something you're going to sell tomorrow or six months from now. It's, but, you know, if I'm telling you this, well, let me put it to you this way. It's what I do with my money. So I ain't telling anybody something I didn't do. But I'm holding. I'm holding. So, you know. And oil, just sitting up above $96, you know, even despite this massive explosion that happened, right? So, you know, you'd think that would move something up because if it was done as an act of sabotage, um, you know, Iran should, should be retaliating, right? Now, another thing that's coming up is I, uh, North Korea is threatening South Korea, which is like old news if you go back to the 1950s, right? It's been going on forever. And I know when Kim Il-sung died, I think that was in the 1990s sometime, early 1990s, they expected an attack upon South Korea. Actually, all the military intelligence thought this. Man, they're flying up M1 Abrams tanks and stuff and C5 galaxies one at a time, getting ready for the attack. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. But, you know, it's always speculation. But, you know, this is the whole reason you got silver and gold. It's speculation as to when there's going to be a crash of the economy or maybe it's going to be a crash that goes in steps. That's what I'm more thinking. I don't think it's going to crash right away. But this is why you got silver and gold. And basically when a freaking end occurs, it's going to be like a nuke going off. You know, it's like you're preparing financially. And you shouldn't be like worrying about too much about what's going on in the market today. But if you don't have silver and gold, I mean, I'm not saying put every ounce of your money into silver and gold. Okay? I vehemently disagree with all fiat paper is garbage. I vehemently disagree with that. You know, obviously, when we go to a store today, you buy stuff on physical paper, for crying out loud. So, I mean, some of these guys who push into silver, I mean, you're like, you know, get rid of all your fiat money. Everything's going to go to nothing. Actually, it's not going to go to nothing right away. But the writing's on the wall. Looking at this event, when I ran, this oil tanker back here is going to be worth more than the damn gold, for crying out loud. It's going to be liquid gold. And 
I'm telling you again about the bicycle that's going to save your ass as far as transportation goes because, uh, I don't know, this thing looks like it's heating up, and when things heat up, it's going to be unexpected. So prepare for the unexpected. So keep on. If you don't have silver and gold, get it. But if you're already real well stacked, I mean, you don't have to keep adding on the dips. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, it's not the only investment out there. Just think about it. Just think about it. It's not the only investment out there. Do you use silver every day in your daily life? You do more or less. Uh, but let's think about all the other things you use in your daily life. Food is a great investment. Uh, energy sources are a great investment. And even building supplies could be a great investment, you know? Uh, anything else like that. The bicycle is a number one investment. But, you know, looking ahead, it looks like the economy is underwater, you know? It's like we're pedaling underwater. And Ben Bernanke, his policy is actually putting us more and more underwater, although we don't see it right away. Uh, what's going on, basically, in simple terms, unlimited money printing from the Federal Reserve, unlimited euro printing from the Euro Central Bank, unlimited yen printing from the Bank of Japan, because now we got the new Liberal Democratic Party elected in Japan, so they're doing super QE. Hey, it's just simple, gold and silver. Yeah, I know you don't see the price moving, right? But, you know, honestly, silver industrial demand was down a little bit for 2012, although investment demand was up. The economy is affecting silver industrial demand, although investment demand is up. And I know the coins are, you know, basically American silver eagles and stuff. You can't get them anymore to mint suspended sales. Canada is doing something with their coins, you know. So there's a lot in heavy demand on coins, but that doesn't mean the supply of silver is going to run out. And like I said, if silver goes up to hundreds of dollars an ounce, they'll find a lot more of it. Like, what we're playing right now is a card game, and I'm actually out for the middle class because I want to give you a more reasoned, rationale approach behind everything. Because, um, you know, silver's not your only investment. Like, for instance, if you had this oil tanker back here filled up with crude oil, you're probably going to do pretty damn good on that stuff, too, if you can actually store that much oil, right? I mean, but, you know, it's impractical. That's why you have silver and gold. This bicycle probably worth more than its weight in silver, easily by all the practical use you can get out of it for the next so many years. So just don't think like a one-track mind. And these guys that are actually pushing you to get put every ounce of your money into silver are liars. All right? I want to say that. They're really liars. I mean, I don't like saying stuff like that because, you know, if I put it that bluntly, people think I'm being a too accusatory and go prove it and just use a little common sense. These are smarter people that sometimes that are giving advice about silver and gold. And when they're telling you to put all your money into it, everything else is going to oblivion. They're pumping dumpers. They're bullshit too. Now I'm gonna tell you one thing. I said some things about Sprott. I don't you know the guy makes a lot of money, right? But you know, don't follow him around like you're like he's God, because he ain't gonna make do nothing for you, that's for sure. David Morgan, I have more respect for him. I think he's a little more out for the middle class because I'm going to tell you one thing he said. Uh, I know he sold silver on April 28, 2011, which means he probably knew something, I would guess, right? But uh, he did tell people, you know, I told you to buy it around 15, 16. Here it's a little above 30. Go sell half. Go buy some, some things with it you need or you want. He gave some advice about that. And, you know, to me... That's a person that's actually giving you more straight scoop than the other guys, okay? He's not somebody telling you put every ounce of your money into silver. So I got a lot more respect for David Morgan, you know, than a lot of other guys. You know, he's a big guy that's been around a while. But, you know, if you want to listen to a big guy that's been around a while that says some stuff that's legit and he knows a lot about silver, it would be David Morgan. I got respect for that guy because he wasn't somebody that says, hold forever, hold, 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 the sky is falling. He knows better. And if you listen to what he says, he's the only guy I would actually trust that's like a really 100% silver guy. I'm telling you that right now, and I'm using my common sense on this deal. But just watch uh, in the future. It looks like war is heating up in the Middle East. You know, Iran's denying this explosion, but now I'm seeing that it's, it's confirmed, and it's legit. That set him back. You know what? Just in my mind, I think it's sabotage. Just shoot from the hip. But a lot of people kind of think that too. You know, it may not just been an accident. It may have been sabotage. There's been some other instances in the past before. 
So what I say is I think the situation in the Middle East is going to be heating up more and more. And as it does, gold is going to go up, oil is going to go up, and silver is going to start taking off like a rocket ship. And then we got the situation with Korea. Because if the United States gets busy in uh, Iran with a war, and it's tied down a little bit longer, and there's problems going on with the economy, the debt situation, and funding, you know, the debt ceiling, and who the hell are they going to sell their debt to to, to fund the military machine? I think North Korea is going to go for an attack on South Korea. As this heats up, you're going to see the dollar go down, and gold and silver are going to go up. It's going to be unexpected. But I think it's going to be in stages. Don't trust these guys that are. And I'm not going to. I'm going to leave David Morgan out of this because I just like. To tell you the truth, I read him as a different type of character than some of these BS bloggers out there and stuff like that because they tell you like everything's the biggest conspiracy in the world. You know there is a conspiracy against silver. I know that there's manipulation. There's garbage. I know that, but it's not as crazy as some of these guys say. Some of these guys, people are total conspiracy nuts. And uh, I got, you know, I'm in a happy medium, you know. I'm halfway nuts with the conspiracies. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, just watch out because when uh, it goes up, it may re it may actually hit that fib level like Endless Mountain talks about, 75. But you know what I mean? If I'm going to be trying to play Fibonacci and seeing if it's going to go down after it hits a resistance level, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to start selling some physical around 65 to 75 because you're not going to hit that exact magic top perfectly, you know. And uh, I'm going to sell just some of it. I'm not going to sell all of it. I'm definitely going to keep the vast majority of it, no, no doubt about that. I'll just sell a little bit. But, you know, I'll play a little bit of a speculation game because whether you're buying physical metals or you're buying physical oil, like as in this tanker back here, or whatever, you're still speculating with your money one way, no matter how you put it, no matter how you put it. Looks like the bad bet is on fiat currency, but for now, that's what actually buys stuff. And if you look at what the charts say right now, and you know, this is on Kitco, silver's down, right? That means you can got you got less spending power in silver as of the moment. Just they, We just know the deal. We just know the deal. So, you know, unlimited printing, once this money starts hitting in the economy, and it will, Right now, it's all being held at the banks. You know, they're doing asset swaps, basically. You know, mortgage-backed securities for fiat debt notes and stuff like that. That's what they're doing. And when it actually hits the economy, we're going to have rampant inflation. We're going to have rampant inflation. So just remember, um, hang on with the silver. Don't sell it. But don't get so heavy into silver that you don't have enough reserves that you can wait the game out. That's another thing, too, okay? That's another thing. But I think there's some things coming up because Max Kaiser's talking about April and March. And, you know, I'm thinking this all coincides with, um, you know, the, the uh, fiscal, not the fiscal cliff, but the debt ceiling in negotiations. So if there's a problem then, when they had the debt ceiling negotiations back in August of 2011, Gold hit a peak, silver was doing very good, palladium actually was doing very good, platinum, all those things were actually doing very good. A lot of investor demand went into precious metals, real assets, because they were scared of the dollar. Now, I see a pump and dump play game coming up with this stuff, so I'm thinking it's a combined combination with, uh, you know, I'm going to be actually dumping some when it gets near that next fib point. I'm going to go by Endless Mountain's uh, analysis versus some of these other people out there. Fibonacci basically is one thing you can actually trust. Um, doesn't always hit the actual point where it bounces off, but you know what? I trust the laws of nature, and markets play the laws of nature. So that's going to be the game plan I'm going to do with some physical silver, not all of it. Not all of it. I'm keeping most of that insurance policy, no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, when silver does hit those stratosphere, it's going to be like a nuclear bomb, unexpectedly. And if you don't have it, you're going to be screwed. But like I said, don't go dumping all every single cent you have into silver. I think that's stupid. And anybody who's telling you everything's got to be into physical silver, I don't trust those people. I think they're liars. Okay? I really do. So just beware. I mean, uh, nobody... You know, even amongst the silver crowd, a lot of people won't tell you to do that either. You know, just figure it out. 
I mean, you know, you need energy just like this oil tanker too, right? So it's that's really where supply and demand comes into black into being. And Jim Rogers, I mean, he's heavy into agriculture. I mean, he's giving a great scoop about that. So agriculture might be another super investment out there. And actually, if you're not, if you're just into physical ag agriculture, grow a garden, grow a garden. So, uh, you know, that would be better investment to invest into gardening and buying the plants than it would be to buy extra coins, too. I could say that. And that, you definitely would get reap your money back, no problem, guaranteed, in, the, in, in food, physical food. So just remember that. Use a little common sense and, uh, you know... David Morgan, I would definitely think he's the best silver guy to listen to that's best the all the experience. I don't, I don't think he's really going to steer you wrong. The other guys, I don't like them, to tell you the truth. I don't. So that's my two cents on this, but I'm telling you, I'm shooting straight from the hip. I'm not, uh, you know, dead on to. And just let me, just let me uh, leave you with that thought. Just be careful as to who you listen to regarding a lot of these investments. Because a lot of these people know how to play the middle class, too. A lot of them do. They're bad news.